We're going to be applying the order of operations to algebra. This is lesson 18D, and I've got the previous lessons for 18 linked in the description, along with some other helpful videos. An algebraic equation has an equal sign. An algebraic expression doesn't. We have 2 times 2x plus 3 equals, well, that's an equation. It's got an equal sign. And 2 times 2x plus 3 is an expression. There's no equal sign. So you're going to see in the book or on the test, algebraic expression, sometimes we don't need to solve it for an actual answer after an equal sign. Sometimes we just need to simplify it. That's what we would do for an expression. We'll talk about this more in the future. When there's several operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division in an algebraic equation or expression, we need to follow the order of operations to solve or simplify it. We would do the contents of parentheses or brackets first. Then we would do any exponents and roots. We're going to talk about that in Lesson 20. Then we would multiply or divide from left to right, whichever comes first. Then we would add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. And if any of the steps are missing, we skip that missing step and go to the next step. So let's look at some examples. The order of operations says do everything inside the innermost brackets or parentheses first, and we work outward to the next grouping symbols. When we multiply and divide first within them, then do addition or subtraction within them. So we're going to ignore, ignore everything that's on the outside of the brackets or parentheses. So if we saw something like this, this is the innermost one, we would do the 2 plus 4 first. Then we would do what's inside of the parentheses. We've got a 6 plus 2, that's an 8. Then we would multiply it by the 3 to get to 24. For this example, we would do any exponents or roots next after we do the grouping symbol. So we would do this first and get a 9. Then we would do 5 squared, which is 5 times 5. That would be 25 plus 9. We would do any multiplication or division after that, going from left to right, whichever comes first, and then any addition or subtraction from left to right, whichever comes first. We've got this nice, long algebraic expression. Look at this. We're going to do the expression within the grouping symbols first. So even though these are in parentheses, we have an actual expression inside of parentheses. So we're going to do this first. We're going to do the multiplication. 2 times 4 is 8. We'll add the 8. We'll get a plus 16. This whole thing says plus 16. Now we have 5 squared minus negative 3 times negative 2 plus 16. We're going to do the exponent next. That means 5 times 5, so we have a 25. Now we have 25 minus negative 3 times negative 2 plus 16. Because this is multiplication, we're going to do this next. Negative 3 times negative 2, we have two negatives, so that's going to make a positive 6. We have 25 minus 6, which is 19, plus 16. We're adding or subtracting from left to right, whichever comes first. So you don't have to add first. You just go left to right. So here it's got subtraction first and then addition. Just do it straight across, left to right. We get a 35. Now if we did this problem without the order of operations, we'd get a very different and wrong answer. We would get 25 for the 5 squared. And because this is a negative 3, it's minus a negative 3, you would think that we need to add the opposite and have a positive here. See? we'd be adding a positive and get a 28. That's wrong. We're not supposed to go straight across like that. Then you would think that we need to multiply that 28 by the negative 2 and get a negative 56. And we would end up with the wrong answer. We'd get a negative 40 when we did this whole thing. That's wrong. The answer should be 35. If we did inside the parentheses and then the exponent and then the multiplication and then add or subtracted from left to right, whichever came first, we would have a 35. See? So be careful. When expressions are written as complex fractions, that's a fraction that has an expression as a numerator and an expression as a denominator, we solve the numerator, then the denominator, and then we divide. So we would do the 2 plus 7 and get a 9, and the 4 minus 1 and get a 3, and then we would divide and get a 3. The fraction bar groups the numerator's expression separately from the denominator's, so it's considered a grouping symbol like parentheses. So if you saw this, we would do this before we would do anything else. If this was at the end of this expression, we would do this first, then we would do this because it's considered a grouping symbol. Then we would do the exponent, see? For this one, we have the numerator 
we have to do the addition inside the parentheses first, so we end up with a 3 times 8. We can do the 2 times 6 and get a 12. We end up with 24 divided by 12, which is a 2. See? When an exponent is outside of parentheses, we solve inside and then multiply that amount to itself however many times the exponent says. So because this 3 exponent is on the outside of the parentheses, that means we do inside of here first, we get a 5, and it's to the third power. That means 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. For this next one here, we have 5 plus 7 times 2 squared. We would do the 2 squared first. 2 times 2 is 4. So that means we have 5 plus 7 times 4 which means we have 5 plus 28, which means we have 33. In this one, we've got the exponent on the outside of the parentheses. We have to multiply 3 times 2 first and get a 6. That means we have 5 plus 6 squared. That means we have 5 plus 36, because 6 times 6 is 36. That means we have 41. When we see something like this one, we would do this first. We have negative 16 divided by negative 9 plus 5. Negative 9 plus 5 is a negative 4. That means we have 5 squared plus negative 16 divided by negative 4. Well, that is a positive 4 because we have two negatives, isn't it? That means we have 5 squared plus 4. Now we do the exponent. 5 times 5 is 25. We have 25 plus 4. That equals 29. So we would do this first because it's considered a grouped expression, okay? Now we can use the open and close parentheses keys on a calculator to group some operations. And that's right there. See it in the middle, right above the 9? There's an open parentheses and a closed parentheses. We can use those. So for that problem we had where it said 2 plus 7 divided by 4 minus 1, we need to do these operations separately. If we wrote it as a sentence, it would look like this. The 2 plus 7 divided by the 4 minus 1. We would have to actually put in the closed parentheses, then a 2, plus 7, close parentheses, division sign, open parentheses, 4, minus 1, close parentheses, equals, we'll get a 3. Without entering parentheses, a scientific calculator will automatically do the division first and give us a wrong answer, because it thinks it's got to do the order of operations and do division first. So it would do 7 divided by 4 first and give us a 1.75. Then it would add the 2 and take away the 1 and we'd get a 2.75, which is wrong. The answer is a 3. So remember, parentheses can mean multiplication. This means 5 times 3, that's 15. Or they can both be in parentheses, that's a 15. And it can mean grouping of expressions, like 5 times 5, which is 25, or it could just mean this 2 multiplied by that, that 5, which gives us a 10, okay? So either way, all right? I'm going to talk more about exponents in Lesson 20 if you're confused. Don't worry too much, all right? But you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 213. And if you need more help, I'm going to have links in the video's description. There's one 2.4c and 1.8c for grouping symbols in these levels and then there's order of operations videos and the previous parts of this lesson 18 that we just did and our next video is variables and algebraic expressions it's lesson 18e and we're going to talk all about variables all right so I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button. If you're really confused, watch those videos that I've linked. All right? I'm trying to make it easy on you. And it's no big deal if you have to watch this video again. All right? I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you next video. Bye.